Try to say what you think the word means before you see the definition. I'm going to do that here with jejun. I believe it means childlike, acting in a juvenile way. Let's find out. Jejun means dull, lacking flavor, or immature, childish. Okay, I actually didn't know that it also meant dull, lacking flavor. I honestly didn't know that. Obviously, I got right the immature, childish bit. I'm going to say I knew this word, even though it was only one definition that I knew. Protein. I think that means new, but I'm not entirely sure. New first formed? I'm not entirely sure at all, actually. No, I was wrong. Readily taking on different roles, versatile. Wow, how to remember that? I guess they're a pro. They can be versatile, professional, doing different things. Peter Sellers was truly a protein actor playing three different roles. Versatile, adaptable. I did not know this word, protein. Malt. That's a really fancy one. I have no idea what that means. Never seen it before. To defraud or swindle. That does ring a bell. She ended up malting Maria out of hundreds of dollars. Malting. Wow. No, didn't know that one. Next one, gerrymander, yes, to draw the districts of a political area so that you're more likely to win that race. Very famous, particularly in America at the moment. To manipulate voting districts in order to help a particular political party. Yes, I did know that, quite famous, gerrymander. To hedge, yes, of course, not just the hedgerow, like decorating the garden. To hedge your bets means to cover yourself, to ensure yourself against something bad happening. To limit or qualify a statement doesn't have to be a statement, it could be a bet or an investment. So they're tackling just one of the definitions here, which is to hedge your statement, to say that it's true in some circumstances, but not in all circumstances. But you can also hedge an investment by also having a different investment just in case the first one goes wrong, which is the origin, by the way, of the title hedge fund. That's what they do. So I knew that. Sang Freud. I've always seen this one. I think it means cold blood, like staying calm under difficult circumstances, I believe. Let's find out. Yes, calmness or poise in difficult situations. I believe it's German. I think it means cold blood. Someone can correct me. Like staying really calm and cold, even in difficult circumstances. So the hostage negotiator exhibited a Sang Freud calmness that oftentimes was more menacing than the sword. Yeah, I did know that. Palimpsest. Very fancy word. It means a trace that you can just about detect on the page. Like something's been written over, but you can still look and see what was originally written. Something that's been changed numerous times, but on which traces of former iterations can be seen. And notice how we can use this metaphorically. So the downtown area was a palimpsest of the city's checkered past. So you could see traces, vestiges of the original checkered bad past. But now it's obviously changed, but you can still see traces. The downtown was a palimpsest, something on which you can see traces of what it used to be. Arch. Well, you can arch your back, of course, but I think they mean another definition. Maybe like extreme, someone's arch rival, their extreme, most intense rival. Let's find out. To be deliberately teasing. That's a definition I didn't know. It does ring a bell. The Baroness was arch. The word has other definitions, but this is the most important one to study. To tease someone deliberately. Wow. The Baroness was arch. He was arch in his remarks. Teasing. Just about on the periphery of my knowledge, but I did not know this word. Venial. I believe that means corrupt. Wait, no, that's venal. Venial maybe means trivial. I often get them confused. I think venial means trivial. Venal is corrupt without the I. See if I'm right? Yes, trivial, pardonable, easily excused, not that important. Venial. You can look at the ending, I-A-L, links to trivial, sounds the same. Trivial, something not that important, easily forgiven. Venal, meaning corrupt, doesn't have the I. Two different words there, often confused. 
invective, harsh language, abusive or denunciatory language. The internet has unleashed the invectives in many of us, the abusive language across the internet. Blinkered, where you're not seeing the whole perspective. You're kind of putting on goggles so you can't see the full field of view. To have a limited outlook or understanding. The blinkered gambling addict is easily influenced. I did know that. Imbroglio, fantastic word. Like a farce, a scenario where everything's going wrong, there's chaos, a disaster, a debacle. A confusing and embarrassing situation. The chef created an imbroglio that diners would not soon forget. Parvenu. Distantly have heard of that word, but I don't know. Is it an amateur? I'm not sure. Let's find out. A person who has become suddenly wealthy, but is not socially accepted as part of a higher class. How are we going to remember that? Because we're going to be tested later on by Magoosh to see if we've remembered it. So how do we remember that? A parvenu. Maybe someone who is not used to fancy venues and they arrive and they're not socially accepted. Like imagine a fancy restaurant, a fancy venue, and this parvenu comes along and they're not accepted. They're not part of the higher class, even though they're wealthy. That's how I'm gonna try and remember it. Palimpsest, okay, we already knew that word. That means a trace origin. You can obviously test yourself if you didn't know that word. Something where you can detect a trace of the past. Limpid means clear. I know the word doesn't really look like the word clear, but limpid means clear and easily understood, having clarity in expression, limpid. Histrionic, it's like when you throw a fit and you're just like a child going, oh, mom, I can't believe you did that. That's histrionics. I wonder how they define it. Overly theatrical, dramatic, melodramatic, making a big fuss out of nothing being histrionic or having a histrionic outburst. Mettlesome. I think that means brave, like full of metal. I'm not sure. Yeah, filled with courage or valour. I knew that metal meant courage, so I guessed that mettlesome meant full of courage and valour. I did know that word. Sentatious. I know sentient means full of thought, sententious, which I don't know this word. I could guess, but I won't. To be moralizing, usually in a pompous sense, uh, to try and lecture people as if you're their moral superior. So the old man is looking at the teenagers, the adolescents, and speaking sententiously. Youth is wasted on the young. So trying to be like a sermon, moralizing people, teaching them moral lessons, you look down on them, you're pompous, sententious. But how are we going to remember that? Maybe a sentinel in a camp is someone who keeps watch and looks down from a big watchtower. So if that's a sentinel, sententious is someone who looks down at people, treats them in a moralizing way, like trying to teach them lessons. But I will be honest and say I did not know this word. Curmudgeon, someone who's grumpy. A grouchy, surly person, grumpy individual. Quixotic, romantic and idealistic, but maybe not too realistic. Based on Don Quixote, a character in a book. Wildly idealistic, but impractical. There are these startups with quixotic plans. They have great ambitions, but not practical. Jaundiced, could be the disease jaundice, or more likely, Someone with a view that's a bit cynical, skeptical. They've seen too much go wrong. To be biased against something due to envy or prejudice. I actually didn't know that they were biased against it due to envy. I thought they were just biased against it in general. Okay, so that's an aspect of the definition I didn't know. Shelley was jaundiced towards Olivia. Though the two had once been best friends, Olivia had become class president, prom queen, and to make matters worse, the girlfriend of the one boy Shelley liked. So there's a degree of envy there. She's jaundiced. I am going to count that, though, that I knew this word. So, 
sartorial, to do with clothing. She made some interesting sartorial choices related to fashion or clothes. Be careful about your sartorial choices for your upcoming wedding. Malt. <laughs> that was to bilk someone, right? I didn't find a mnemonic for this, but it meant to defraud someone. Malt. How am I going to remember that in the future? I remembered it this time. To malt means to defraud. Malt. I'll let you think of one for that. I didn't remember it though. Aravist. It's like a new arrival, an amateur, a dilettante, someone not used to doing something. A person who has recently reached a position of power, social climber. Okay, so it's an amateur, but more specifically, someone who's new to power. Not just an amateur or anything. So I kind of half knew that word. They were a new arrival, but specifically a new arrival to power. Aravist. I'm going to say I didn't know this word, just to remind me it's about power. Maudlin. Solemn, sad, sentimental, tearful. Overly emotional and sad. And it says here that people who are alive during the 70s are mortified, shocked at the maudlin pop songs they used to enjoy. The overly emotional, sentimental, tearful, sad songs. I did know that one. Martinet. I always forget this word. I think it means someone who scolds, but I'm not sure. Yes, a strict disciplinarian, someone who's very strict, like a headmistress or governess, who is always telling kids off. I did know that, but I often forget it. Martinet. Phantasmagorical means fantastical, made up, out of a storybook, like orcs or elves, a phantasm, a ghost that's made up. Phantasmagorical, a sensational appearance. It's unreal, elusive. It's a phantasm. It doesn't actually exist. Almost like the word fantasy. Just remember that phantasm means ghost. So phantasmagorical means ghostly, elusive, unreal. Mellifluous, sweet sounding. Melly is sweet. So mellifluous is sweet sounding. Like a lovely lullaby. Disabuse, to correct someone. If someone's got a wrong idea, I'm going to disabuse them of that notion correct their misinterpretation, to persuade them that their belief is not valid. I was quickly disabused of the notion. Notice they use the same phrase as me. It's a common one, to be disabused of a notion, to be corrected about an idea. I was disabused of the notion that Santa Claus was a rotund benefactor. Rotund, by the way, means fat, and benefactor means someone who gives gifts. There you go, you learned some extra words. Protein. <laughs> this is the first word I didn't know, wasn't it? Oh, what did it mean again? My memory is terrible. Protein. They're pro. They're adaptable. See how I relied on the mnemonic? Because I taught myself that protein, or someone who is protein, is a pro. They're professional, they're versatile, adaptable. I wouldn't have remembered it without that mnemonic. Ready, taking on different roles. Ready to take on different roles. Adaptable, versatile. So now I did know that word. Apotheosis, being celebrated or elevated up to godlike status. Theo means God, apo means up to apotheosis, exaltation to divine status, the highest point of development. They're saying here that the apotheosis of Zuckerberg's career is yet to come. He's still going to reach higher points. Some would disagree with that. <laughs> Magoosh video lessons, what on earth? That's not a word. A resource. Oh, they're plugging themselves. That's great. That's funny. They do have a great YouTube channel as well. Do check it out. Okay. Peremptory. I think that means cursory, like not done fully. No, I was wrong. Bossy and domineering. Okay. I was thinking perfunctory. Perfunctory is when you do it without much heart. You just do it quickly. Peremptory, bossy, domineering. The way I'm going to remember that is like an emperor is domineering. They're the boss. They're dominant. So peremptory is bossy like an emperor. Peremptory. I didn't know this word. Aravist. This is the one that I did know. It's a new arrival. But I wanted to clarify it's a new arrival to power. So I added that to the learning list because I didn't know it's a new arrival to power. Someone who climbs a social ladder. 
Malapropism. I believe that means making a mistake with your words. Like a word that doesn't actually mean anything. You just made it up. The confusion of one word with another word that sounds similar. So this person made a mistake. They called it an amusing antidote when what they meant was an amusing anecdote. And so it sounded similar. So that was a malapropism, a mistaken word. So I did know that one. Picayune. No idea. Picayune. A trifling or petty person. Trifling, petty. So they're picking up on small things, pointing out small mistakes. English teachers are notorious for being picayune. Hope I'm not too picayune. Hope I don't pick on people's small mistakes. Okay, that's how I'm going to remember it. Picayune, they're picking on you for small mistakes. Picayune, picking on you for little errors. I didn't know that word. Bilious. Not biblius, similar word, meaning someone who likes their alcohol too much. Bilious is to do with vomiting, to do with bile. Sounds similar. Bile is what you vomit out. So bilious, prone to vomiting, being sick. Irritable, always angry. Okay, I'm going to actually check that one. I'll be right back. And I'm back. And according to Google, there are actually two definitions. Bilious is associated with nausea, vomiting, being sick. But it can also mean bad-tempered, spiteful, irritable, tetchy, grumpy, grouchy. And I didn't actually know that aspect of it. Okay, what shall I put that? I'm going to put that as I did not know because I did know about being nauseous and vomiting, but I didn't know about being always angry. Mopped to defraud. I know that now. Pollyanna-ish. Always thinking things are going to be amazing. Thinking the future's so great. Being super optimistic about what is to come, maybe a bit too much so. Extremely optimistic, not just average positive outlook, but to be extremely optimistic, almost too optimistic, to be Pollyanna-ish. Or to be a Pollyanna, is more commonly said. Is he a Pollyanna about the future? She is remaining Pollyanna-ish, extremely optimistic. Arch, to tease someone. I knew the other definitions, but I didn't know it meant to tease someone. To be deliberately teasing an arch. Pick a yoon. Someone who's petty and points out your mistakes. Pick a yoon. Honestly, didn't know that before today. Bilious, easily angered. Irritable is the other definition. Impecunious, poor. Pecuniary is to do with money. So impecunious, poor, without money. Lacking money, being very poor. Peremptory, bossy, remember? Emperor, emptory, like an emperor, peremptory, bossy, domineering. Bossy and domineering. Mnemonics really do help. Vituperate, I think to attack someone verbally, to be vituperative. Vituperate, I believe, means to attack someone verbally. Yes, to criticize someone harshly, like a viper. Vituperate, to berate, hiss at them. Criticize them harshly. Rant at them. A juggernaut, a huge beast or monster that's unstoppable and strong. A juggernaut. A force that cannot be stopped. Napoleon was considered a juggernaut until he decided to invade Russia in winter. Big mistake. Sententious. Well, the mnemonic was to be like a sentinel, looking down at people, moralizing them. Treating them as if you're better and you're pompous. See how I could remember it quite easily with the mnemonic. I don't always have the best memory, but it does help here. Bilious, easily angered. Done that one. Also nauseous. Sybarite, someone who really loves to indulge, particularly in food. Sybaritic, for example. Person who indulges in luxury. Here it says that this person is enjoying a spa at $1,000 an hour. That is expensive. More expensive even than me as a tutor. So clearly we can use the word sybarite about something that isn't just food. But I often use the word when I'm referring to food, like sybaritic fare. But to be a sybarite, you just enjoy luxury, the fancy things, the finer side of life. Benighted, cursed, under a curse. Hmm, fall into a state of ignorance. Okay, far from being a period of utter benightedness. The medieval ages produced some great works of theological speculation. I didn't know that. I'm going to count that as I didn't know. I had a false definition. That's even worse. I thought I knew. 
meant cursed. It's actually more under a state of ignorance, not knowing what's happening, not being informed. So I'm going to count that as if I didn't know the word. Expurgate, to remove something. To expurgate a crime from your records, to purge it, to remove objectionable material. I did know that. Picayune, someone who picks on you for petty matters. Trifling or petty person. Pyrrhic, a famous victory, I think, in the foot of Italy, where you win, but you've lost everything by winning. So a Pyrrhic victory is one where you've won, but you've lost everything. Maybe all your money or all your troops or all your dignity in winning. So it's a Pyrrhic victory. It's actually a loss because even though you've won, you've lost everything. Describing a victory that comes at such a great cost that the victory is not worthwhile. A Pyrrhic victory. Propitiate. Ah, oh, I've heard of that. Honestly, I've forgotten though. I think it means like a good omen, but I'm not sure. I used to know that. To placate or appease, I should have known that. Propitiate. Have pity on me. Maybe that word in the middle, pity. Have pity on me. Calm down, calm down, have pity. You're trying to calm someone down, placate them, appease them, not annoy them. So in a way, you're kind of asking, have pity on me. Just be quiet, child. Calm down, have pity on me. Propitiate. I know it's not pronounced pity, but that's going to help me remember that. Okay, I didn't actually know that word. Protean, they're a pro, they're adaptable, versatile. I do now know that word. Tendentious. I think that means going with the crowd, having a tendency just to follow along. Likely to lean towards a controversial view. Okay, so I was right, but not summing up the full word. So you are leaning towards having a tendency towards a view, but I didn't necessarily know it meant a controversial view. Kind of being contrarian. Rejecting the mainstream. Okay, so I'm going to count that as if I didn't know, because I didn't know... It was leaning towards having a tendency towards a view that was controversial. I just thought it meant following along. In a way, it's the opposite. It's following a controversy, following along, but with a view that's controversial out of the mainstream. I didn't know that. Fell. I think it means dangerous. Obviously, you can, someone who fell over, but they mean something different. A fell, dangerous, terribly evil. Yes, like fell Lord Voldemort or Sauron from Lord of the Rings. More of an archaic word, less commonly used these days, but good to know. If you ever see something described as fell, you're probably reading a book and that thing is horribly evil. Cupidity, romantic. Like I think there was a little angel, wasn't there? Cupid, setting up romance. Wait, what? Cupidity is greed for money. I guess Cupid means desire, so cupidity, desire for money, I didn't know that. Okay, so Cupid was the angel of desire, but cupidity is desire for money. I did not know that. Cupidity, greed, brings anything but happiness. I did not know that word. Remonstrate, to argue against something, to make objections while pleading. The mothers of the victims remonstrated to the government to really object to what's going on, pleading for something to happen. A bit like demonstrating, but with your words. You're remonstrating. You're really making objections. Arch, deliberately teasing. We know that one now. Cupidity is greed. Picayune, petty. Parvenu. Someone who's new to money and not socially accepted. Remember, they turn up to a fancy venue and they're rejected. So rejected by the higher classes because they're new to wealth. Parvenu. Only remembered it because of the mnemonic. Tendentious, someone who is drawn towards controversial views. Again, the mnemonic. Parvenu, we've done that already. Someone new to wealth. Execrate is to... Clicked on the definition a bit too soon, but to curse someone, to hiss at them, to detest or loathe something. Often used with the description execrable. It's actually more common than the verb, I think, execrate. 
If you describe something as execrable, you're saying it's cursed, detestable, loathable, horrible, awful, execrable. Or the verb is to execrate something, to curse at it, hiss at it. Cupidity, extreme greed. I now know that word. Benighted, not cursed. It means ignorant. I did not know that. Peremptory, like an emperor, bossy. I now know that word. Aravist, a new arrival to power. Parvenu, a new social climber. Factitious. Hmm, given to factions, I would say. Let's see if that's right. No, artificial, not natural. Wow, it's like a mixture of the words fake and fictitious, meaning made up, not natural. Fake, artificial, fictitious, made up, together, factitious, artificial and not natural. The defendant's story was largely factitious, made up, not true, and did not accord with the eyewitness testimonies. Genuinely a new word for me. You're seeing how many words I've learned today, like 12, I think, at least. I did not know that word. Propitiate, have pity on me. You're pleading, you're trying to placate them and appease them. I remembered that because of the mnemonic. To propitiate, to placate, or appease, to calm them down. Factitious, not natural, artificial, fake and fictitious. I now know that word. Tendentious, leaning towards a controversial point of view. Excoriate, to attack someone verbally really harshly. I know there's quite a few words for that. It's interesting how many the English language has. To criticize very harshly, to excoriate. I guess there's so many ways of mocking someone or attacking someone. That's why there's so many words for it. Protean, flexible like an actor, readily taking on different roles. Schadenfreude, enjoying someone else's pain. Very famous word, very useful. I had a sense of schadenfreude when I saw my rival fall over. Great word to know actually. Joy from watching the suffering of others. Stanley reveled, relished in schadenfreude as he laughed at the figures below, huddled in the cold while he was warm. Joy in someone else's pain. Peremptory, bossy, like an emperor. Propitiate, placate and appease. Factitious, fake, not natural. Benighted, ignorant. Almost at the end now, peremptory, bossy. They really do test it quite a few times. Leaning towards controversial views. Arch, easily teasing. Factitious, fake, and not natural. And I think sententious, like a sentinel, moralizing, looking down in a pompous way. Quizzling. Quizzling is someone who betrays their nation. I think it was a Norwegian guy who betrayed the Norwegians to the Nazis. A traitor. Quizzling, you quizzling, you traitor. You betrayed the nation. Funny word. New arrival to power, Aravist. Okay, benighted, ignorant. Parvenu, we, all, we know these words now. So yes, they do test it quite a few times, but great for really making sure you do know what you're talking about. Impecunious without money. Remember, pecuniary is money, so impecunious without any money. I'm just clicking now just to see. There you go, I've mastered all 51 words. But this is not about me. I think there's about 13 that I didn't know fully. So it was great for me, but I hope it was even more great for you. Yes, these are advanced words. And some people say text completion and sentence equivalents don't always test these advanced words, but they also do turn up in reading comprehension, which really can help you understand the purpose of a passage, the tone of what the author is trying to say. So useful for anyone. Hope you enjoyed.